right over your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to finish this up tonight. I know I've been anticipating that, not in a hurry to get done with this um, Bible series on value, um, on uh, the things God values or determining, determining what is valuable. Um, now, God has already determined what is valuable. It's us to find out what that is. And he tells us in his book, determining what is valuable. Determining what is valuable, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Verse 19, the Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd meet with us again tonight, as you did this morning. Uh, Heavenly Father, I don't, um, Bible studies and prayer meetings, those are, those are all wonderful, uh, but uh, we want Jesus, we want the Holy Spirit uh, to be the main attraction. Uh, and Lord, these are your words, words that you have extended and preserved unto us. Help us to learn them and then to live by them and then teach them to others also. Lord, help our church. Uh, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now. Um, uh, very quickly, I will not give you a whole review from the last several from the last several weeks, but I will give you um, a quick review. Was none, uh, I, I gave you number one? Obedience is prin uh, obedience to principle takes time. Uh, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> just as it takes time to grow, just as it time takes time to lose weight, just like it takes time to gain knowledge, it takes time. Obedience to principle takes time because you are now living in that the power of the new man, that new man is learning new principles, it takes time to get the rhythm to live this new life. Uh, number one, obedience to principle takes time. Number two, obedience takes all the time we have. See, if you live a life of obedience, it'll take all the time that you have. You'll find yourself um, very little disobeying the Lord. Uh, you won't have... Um, uh, uh, to spend all your time in confession of sins because you feel like a dirty, rotten sinner, you'll be able to thank the Lord. You'll be able to spend time in gratitude and thanksgiving and supplication and intercessory prayer for others. Why? Because you're living in a life of obedience, obedience, obedience. You're not having to spend all your time in a makeup session with the Lord. You are uh, uh, living close to him already in, um, uh, in obedience, in obedience. So, uh, number one, obedience to principle takes all or takes time, and then obedience takes all the time we have. It takes all the time we have. Number three, life gets out of balance when people spend time chasing things that cannot be obtained. Uh, we call that maybe materialistic. Uh, you know, we chase things that we we can't have. We try to find joy um, in things that only give us happiness. We try to find happiness in things that uh, uh, are sinful. You know, um, uh, very quickly, very, very quickly, uh, we get saved, we get baptized, we get into the fold with God's children, and we start learning to read our Bibles and praying. But I'll tell you what, I, I'll tell you what, it kind of, it loses its momentum. The fire burns hot to start because it's new and fresh. But after a month or two or a year or three or whatever, depending on the person, that fire begins to, to dwindle, it's not as fervent, it's not as hot. And you begin to say, you know what, I, 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 uh, I'm gonna go back and do the things that I, that I used to do. Um, and because I, there, uh, at least it gave me some relief for the night, at least I felt some sort of, some so something, I felt something. And the, the thing is, is you feel the way you do now, not because you started following the Lord. You feel the way you do now, not because uh, you started learning to read your Bible and pray and those things. And, and I, well, I, I guess you could say, yes, it is because of those things, because now you have opposition. You have opposition now. The devil didn't bother you. He got you to smoke your dope and drink your drink and party with your people and do all and speak the way you wanted to speak and do and live the way you wanted to do how you felt. He, as long as you, as long as you weren't saved, he was happy. You know, as long as you weren't serving the Lord, he was happy. Oh, but lo and behold, you got saved. That put him on his toes. He went, oh man. And then you joined a church and started reading your Bible and started singing in the choir and started tithing, started singing about Jesus and talking about Jesus and trying to start serving. 
serve Jesus and say, all right, husband, or all right, wife, or all right, kids, what do we do? How do we serve the Lord? How do we go about it? Now the devil, now there's opposition, you see. If you're not fighting against the devil, the devil doesn't care. If you're not warring against the flesh and the world and the devil, the devil doesn't care what you do as long as you're not serving the Lord. But uh, that's the, exactly what the devil does is he tries to throw a wet blanket on your fire. And what happens is, is we, um, we start chasing things immediately that we cannot obtain. We want, um, uh, we want to be perfectly mature in Christ. You can't do it. You're not in heaven. You can be on a journey to be perfect in Christ, but you'll never be perfect in Christ. You will always fight sin. Understand that. Yeah, brother Lester Roloff, I think, said, um, it's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight. It's not a game. So run if you want to and run if you will. But I came here to stay. I said it this morning. I said it on Saturday again. You don't lose if you, just, if you keep getting up. You didn't lose just because you knocked down, got knocked down doesn't mean you lost. Keep getting knocked, uh, uh, get, getting knocked up. But it's, it's, you'll, you'll get your life in balance when you find out what can be obtained. Isaiah 26.3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Perfect peace is attainable. And, and I, I got to tell you, 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 you can have per perfect peace, but did you know your peace can still be shaken? Your, your peace can still be shaken. You can have all the faith in the Lord and you can still worry. You can still fear. You can, you can still doubt. But the neat thing about this is, is the balance. When we get out of balance, the Holy Spirit, the Bible is our equilibrium that balances us back out. You see, when we worry, when we doubt, when we fear, when we try to chase the things that are unobtainable, and we realize, man, those things are faster than I am. They're always out of my grasp, always out of my reach. Why can't I get to them? And we begin to ask why, 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 why. When you are asking why in your life, you should go to the Bible. Why, God? Why, why? And remember the question, the, 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 there's something to that. There's don't go past Why? Uh, don't don't you can add it's okay to ask God why but don't go past why don't start trying to figure it out for yourself don't try to um, psychoanalyze yourself the Bible knows you God knows how many hairs are on your head he knows how many molecules you'll make you're made up of he knows when you're going to die so when you get your life out of balance by chasing things that you cannot obtain by living an un, unsustainable lifestyle um, whether it be uh, health or wealth or, or uh, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, even, uh, uh, even lost or worldly people get to a place in their life where they're like, God, this, that kind of living is not sustainable. You can't, I can't, I'm in my 50s, I'm in my 60s, I can't party like I was when I was 20 or 30. You know, I can't, can't do that anymore. Even, even the, the lost world knows that there's a time to put stuff away and kind of move on with your life. Um, and you, there's just some things in life you, you can't obtain, and um, uh, peace in the world is one of them. Uh, there's, you, all, what is it, Miss, the Miss America pageant? I'd want peace on earth. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, world peace. Yes, sir. I did not know that. Yeah. Be yeah, sure. Yep. Yep. Can't. No, but that's right there. You can't obtain stuff. Can't obtain it. And life gets out of balance when you're trying to obtain things that cannot be obtained or God is going to obtain them for you. God, I want God's will. All right, well, let God be the one who distributes it. Don't snatch it out of his hand. Don't try to snatch it out of his hand. Many people think um, uh, they, they, uh, uh, this is a good thing, so I'm just going to run out and do it when you're doing a good thing, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not the best thing. We've tried to figure it all out. You're not going to figure it all out. Number one is it takes time. It takes time to be obedient to principle. Number two, obedience takes all your time. There's never a good time to be disobedient. And number three, we get life out of balance when we spend time trying to obtain things that cannot be, or chasing things that cannot be obtained. 
Somebody says, I just want to be happy, have enough money in the bank, have my right kind of house, have my right kind of cars, have my health. Is that too much to ask for? Yes, because those things are earned. And then those things are diligently kept. Those things are prayed for. Those things, listen, I, 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 that was my conversation with the Lord. Lord, I'm not asking for, I don't mind asking to win the lottery. I'm not asking to be a millionaire. Lord, I just want a place where I can raise my family and I want a place where I can throw the stick to the dog and, and uh, um, have a solid couple of vehicles for the family, you know, and, and have just a life where I can get in and say, okay, these things are sure. But the truth of it is, is there's nothing that is sure. Because as soon as I get the house, it'll burn down. As soon as I get the car, I'll hit a deer, amen. As soon as, as, soon as I obtain the thing that I think will make me happy, it's made of wood, hay, and stubble. It, it Burn up, go away, gone. So unless I get it from God, I don't want it. Unless God gives it to me, because then I can say God gave it to me and it's God's to take away. It wasn't mine in the first place, it was God's. So I don't wanna spend my time chasing things that I can't have anyway. I want to find out what can be obtained. Then I want to, I want to get that. What do they say? Better is um, uh, one in the hand than two in the bush or whatever they say. You know, Better to have something in the hand than a hopeful out in the future. Better to have it now. So you know, uh, would, you have a, would you rather have a million dollars now or a penny a day for 30 years? Okay, well, if you do the math, of course, it's multiplied millions. But I'd rather have a million today. You say, why? Because I might die tomorrow. I might die tomorrow. And then what good is all those millions? Jamie's like, it's worth a lot. Uh, but um, uh, it, does that roll over? Is there a beneficiary plan with that? Uh, uh, but uh, I told Lucas the other day that if something tragic were to happen to his mother and I, that he was the second beneficiary, but he'd have to, if he wasn't 18, he'd have to, he'd be given to a family member, you know, whatever, custody and whatever. I said, yeah, I already got that planned out. Uh, and I said, um, and I said, you'd get X amount of money, um, you know, through the insurance policy. And I said, it's at least $25. And he said, yeah, and, and he looked at me and I told him how much it was and he picked up a pocket knife real quick, like, all right, dad. No, it, it's not really that much, but it's, it, it's enough for, it's enough for him. And, um, it's, and I told him, I said, dude, I don't need no $10,000 casket. Please do not put me in, 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 I mean, if you want to spend a grand, fine, you know, don't put me in a cardboard box, you know, but Put me in a pine box. I don't care what you do. I was like, but go through the motions, but don't spend thousands of dollars on your dad's funeral because you want to honor him. Hang all that mess. Live right. Do right. Uh, marry a good girl. Raise your children for God. Serve the Lord. Tell somebody about Jesus. Stand by the King James Bible. Go to an independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, soul-winning, chandelier-shaking, paint-peeling Baptist church. Then you're honoring your dad. By honoring your dad, you honor God. By on you honor your dad by honoring God. That's what I want you to do. I want you to honor. So, so bury me and, 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 and um, uh, be done with it. You know, uh, put a nice headstone and, or whatever, but don't, don't go, don't let them talk about a bunch of, they're there to help you in a time of burial and grief. Yes, but they're still sharks for your money. Those guys are living in nicer houses and driving nicer cars and wearing nicer suits than anybody you know in church. Um, and, and it's a, it, hey, we live in America. Uh, and it's a capitalist America, um, and people capitalize on grief. They capitalize on addiction, and bless God, they ca even the American government capitalizes on your death. Oh, you're dead. Time to pay taxes. Um, uh, so, so don't go spending a bunch of money on on, on my funeral. Um, uh, but um, I told him if something were bad to happen, this is how much you'd get. That there's some valuable there. He'd be able to do something. Uh, education-wise or job-wise or a car or whatever to help them get on their feet and get going after mom and dad are gone. Why? Because I left some, some what the world thinks is valuable. Money, right? Money. But the world has stolen, stolen away what truly is valuable. Folks, we don't, we're so far past political opposition in this world. It's time, we're, folks, we're a good and evil. We're, a play, we're at a place in this country where it is good or evil. You are either pro-trans or you're anti-trans. You're either pro-homosexual or you're anti, or you're, you're either a hater or a lover. Oh, no, I'm a lover, therefore I am a hater. 
You say, what is this, Brother Jake? The world, the flesh, and the devil. I love him. I love him more than I want to say, oh, I, I love everybody. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that if the homosexual, if the transsexual, if the demented, if the, if the gangbanger, if the murderer, if, the, if the, the robber, if the thief, if the rapist, you say, Brother Jackson, there are some sins that just cannot be forgiven. Oh, maybe man to man, but he can forgive them because the Bible says where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And God is not willing that the homosexual or the transsexual or the murderer or the rapist or the guy who has to report himself to whatever district he lives in, God doesn't want any of them to go to hell. And people don't want to hear that. They think people who have done such, um, uh, 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 such harm to society, listen, on a societal level, hey, I'm with you. You go live out in the boonies somewhere, dude. You just, you, you just, you just disappear. You hurt a child. You, you take advantage of a woman. You, 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 you harm people. Some, some, some guy is about his business, and just because you had a bad day and you went and, and, and blew his brains out because you were in a rampage, man to man, I believe in eye for eye, tooth for tooth, life for life. If you shed blood, if you live by the sword, your life ought to be taken by the sword. But it doesn't mean you have to be condemned to hell for eternity. God can take it and wash it away. And if he, by the way, if he can't wash away any sin, then he's not God. So just make that statement for anybody that, I don't think anybody in here has a problem with that. But there's, these videos have, have caught on here and there. You know, 8,000 views, 7,000, 2,000, uh, 1,000, began to dwindle real quick. <laughs> they saw my face and went, scroll. <laughs> don't want to hear that guy. Uh, but um, I think even my dad's has got a couple of thousand where he's, shine on, brother, shine on, sister. Um, but uh, the values in America have changed. Who's changed them? The world has. The devil has. Uh, I, I talked about it last week where there was a time where, where young men, young men wanted to serve their country and, uh, uh, and serve people. And, and it's not so much that anyway anymore. People just want to be Instagram um, uh, and make an easy buck. And they want, everybody wants to be an influencer and, and uh, be TikTok famous and, and all those things. And by the way, it's just, it's just another amusement Muse means to think, ah, muse means to not think, and we are, uh, it, it, that, that, that phone is a rabbit hole that you just get lost in, um, and uh, everybody wants to see, hey, my 15 minutes of fame, everybody wants that. There was a day when young ladies dreamed about being mothers and wives and raising children and, and um, uh, bringing to life those dolls, those little baby dolls that they used to play with and feed and change and burp and carry around the house, it's not that way anymore. Um, uh, it, it, it just isn't. But what happened? What happened? Rather than preparing our ladies for motherhood and family, little girls are now being prepared for a career. Uh, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that um, uh, ladies shouldn't work. The Bible actually teaches the opposite of that. If you know your Bible at all, it's a Proverbs 31 woman, and they can be found throughout Scripture. And I don't care if, um, uh, if every uh, uh, feminist Nazi woman in America and in the world hears this, you are not a man. You are not on the same level as a man just as man is not on the same level of God. Get that now. I don't, I don't, I don't care if anybody doesn't like it. I, 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 just, I, I really just don't care. There comes a time in life where you've got to choose what you care about and what you don't care about, and I don't care about what feminists think, but the fact of the matter is the feminist movement has been so strong for so long, it's gotten into our schools, which has gotten into our homes, which has gotten into our churches, where kids are growing up now not even knowing that there's a feminist movement. Feminism, fem, the feminist movement is just a part of culture. Um, just as uh, I was talking to, to my dad some time ago about um, the dress standard issue, where I said, man, if you walked up to a girl now, a young lady now, a teenager, a young lady in church, and you said, hey, you know, um, you know the Bible teaches, and, and I mean in a teaching way, I didn't mean you're walking up to them going, ah, pants on women's wicked and you're going to hell. Obviously not. The Bible says the goodness of God leadeth men to repentance, not beating them over the head with a Bible. Uh, but I said, man, it's so in, it's so in our culture now it was a day when you'd walk out and seeing a woman in pants was 
the oddball out. Women were in skirts and dresses and nice attire going up and down the streets. Even out west, they were doing those things. In American history, it was, it was skirts and dresses. But now, to see a woman in a skirt or a dress, it, that's the, it's flipped on its head. I said, so walking up and teaching that to a generation of ladies now is like taboo. It's coming, it's way out and like, wait, what are you saying? This is news to me. What kind of weirdo are you telling me that I can, well, what would you have us wear? It's so odd now. Why? How has it gotten to that point? Well, because we stopped valuing what God values. We stopped valuing what God values. Women should want to have children. Uh, the value of a little girl, precious, innocent little girls and little boys. But um, uh, 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 a lot of folks today don't want to have kids because what's going to happen? Their children are going to get in the way of their career. They'll ruin my body. You mean the body that says, what? No, you're not. You are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Your body is not his body. Now, I'm, of course, uh, I, 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 that, that's a reference to... to um, uh, born again born again women but the bible tells of people who they couldn't have children they couldn't have children so they were so grieved that they would go to children or they would go to god and beg for children oh god give me a child oh god give me a child if you give me a child i'll give him right back to you i promise him to you right now and by the way let me again i say again i'm not against wives or ladies who work in today's society with the prices the way they are uh, you almost you 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 have to, uh, and if you know anything about your Bible, um, a woman is 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 busy about her work. According to the Bible, beginning in the book of Genesis, God saw that Adam was alone, and He made for a helpmeet for him. He made her to help the husband in the will of God. Now, did that did 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 you know anything about the virtuous woman? Did you just stay home and bake cookies and 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 run a vacuum and clean cobwebs? No, she didn't. If you know Proverbs 31, she was busy, busy, busy getting things done, being an asset to her husband, to her children, and to her family. Uh, but what has happened is, is we've let the devil reappraise things in life. You have to have a big screen television, otherwise you're not cool. People won't want to come over to your house for the Super Bowl. You have to drive uh, the newest and latest SUV to keep up with that lady, that girl, that mom down the street who has the new one. And then the dad, the husband, feels like, man, I would love to be able to give my wife a vehicle like that. I would love to be able to give my wife and my kids a house like that and a yard like that and have a dog like that and a play set like that and to have the dirt bikes they have and a horse, you know, and I, I'd like to be able to do those things. And, and the husband feels that if I don't provide those things for my family, then I'm coming up short. No, you've just got your appraisal on values wrong. See, the Bible teaches it over and over again that uh, in the house of riches, there's a whole lot of drama. There's a whole lot of strife. Just because you see the Cadillac and you see the nice house with the pillars out front and they're out back sipping on their lemonade doesn't mean they're happy. They're probably on the brink of divorce, and that's not for all of them. Some of them live very content lives. But stuff, stuff isn't the, the value. God is the appraiser. The Bible is the appraisal book. When we get to know the appraisal book, we find out what's valuable. And God said, listen, God owns it all. So once we say, God, what's near and dear to your heart? And he shows us what's near and dear to heart, his heart. And then we put those things at the top of the list in our life. Don't be shocked when the, when the pony comes along. Don't be shocked. And I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying don't be shocked. Because God is a, I think God, our father, likes to surprise us just like I like to surprise my kids. You know, uh, Megan and the boys last night, they were watching a movie. I've never seen the whole thing. It's called Facing the Giants. Facing the Giants. And the gist of it is, is what I understand is 
Uh, this man and his wife, they moved to a town. He's a football coach, but he's having a hard time and whatnot. And he contemplates just quitting and going out and getting a job. And, um, you know, so, so some people and things intervene in his life. And they go to the state championship. And he wins. The, they win the championship game. But during this whole time, one of their things is he wanted to be a dad. He wanted to have a baby. Oh, he wanted to have a baby. And here he is. He's on the mountaintop. Man, he, he knows that God led him to do this. He knows that God used him as a football coach. And and, and praise the Lord in the locker room just because you're a football coach doesn't mean you got to be a cussing, swearing fool. You can honor God in any area of your life. And he went in, they praised God, and they got and they nailed down and they prayed. And, you know, all the festivities are over. And he goes home and his wife is waiting on him. And um, uh, he comes in and they share a moment of joy of winning the state championship. And he says, man, God did it with me. And, and, and I hear I was thinking about quitting and God used me. And she said, not only did God use you and not only, um, uh, you know, not only are you champion in this realm, but we're, we're also going to be a family. We're going to have a baby. And what was that? Here he is already on a mountain to the mountain, mountaintop of gratitude and a mountaintop of victory and a mountaintop of confidence. And God goes, oh yeah, watch this. And puts a cherry on top. You see, it's not a matter of if God doesn't come through in my timing, it's not a matter of if, if I see God and feel God out on the things that I've chased after the things that he said were important and look where it's left me. That's not the case at all. It's I'm going to be true till death, whether I get a house or a mansion or a shack or a Cadillac or a Pinto or something in between, I'm going to find out what God wants and I'm going to chase it with all my life. Why? Because we go right back to our text that says, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, but lay them up in heaven. Lay them up in heaven because your Cadillac's going to burn up. Your house in the hills is going to burn up. That horse is going to die and be turned into glue one day anyway. That, that, um, uh, 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 it's all going to fade away. Remember, wood, hay, stubble. What is wood, hay, stubble? Things done, done on earth for earth. What's gold, silver, precious stones? Things done on earth for heaven. All those things are going to be tried on the altar of God one day in heaven at the judgment seat of Christ. Whatever is left over is what's left over. I'd like a whole lot less burnable things to be on that altar. <laughs> so I want to be um, given while I'm living so I can be knowing where it's going. So when I get to heaven, I can say, that right there's wood hay, or that right there's wood hay stubble. That's going to be gone, no worries. But that there, all that stuff there, that's gold, silver, precious stones. Now, the devil has come along and he's re given a reappraisal of the things in life. He has sold us a lie. <gasps> You mean the devil lied to us? Yeah, folks, the devil hasn't changed. He lied to Eve. He's lied to Eve. He's been lying to everybody in between since then, and he's lying to you tonight. He's lying to you. He's the father of lies, and the Bible says that God, Jesus said, he's a murderer. He's a murderer. Now, we need to value things again, value things. One of the greatest things that I value, one of the highest things on my list that I value is my family. I love my family. I hate being away from my family. Tomorrow I'll leave my family again. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I detest it. I'm mad about it. I complain to God about it all the time. I'm like, you know, getting in the truck is like going and standing in the corner for me. You know, I, Father, I don't want to. Every Monday I pack my bags and I leave the house and I, I leave the house and I walk out and go, I don't want to. And I can just see the Lord like, go. And uh, I hope he has pity on me, but I don't want to. You know what I don't want? You know why I don't want to? Because I miss my wife. I miss my kids. I need somebody to pick on throughout the week. And um, I miss my kids. They need their dad. They need, they need, I'll tell you what, there's a big difference between mama yelling at them and daddy yelling at them. Moms, there's no disrespect to you, but there's something inside of a little boy. When mama yells at him, he knows that he can get away with more. But when daddy gets on him, and I mean daddy gets on him, there's something different about it because there's a construct there that God put there that said, that's man to man. There's a little man inside of there, and that little man needs a grown man, needs a big man to iron out that little man. 
And they need me to get in their face. And they need me to have, they need to have tears. Well, but they also need a pat on the back from dad. They also need an I love you from dad. They also need an I'm proud of you from dad. Why? Because daddy can see things in those little men, those little boys that mama can't see. God has not given it to that mama to see it in that kid, but he's given it to daddy. Why? Because daddy's the head of the household. Because daddy's the breadwinner. Because daddy's the, the image of God in that house. And the ability to see that. I love my family. I love my family more than anything. Uh, but of course, besides, besides God. Now, it all begins with family for me. It all ends with family in the family of God. It's not about individuals. It's not about careers, about what I can do and what I can achieve. Folks, there is eternal value in family. We're raising up the next generation. Uh, we, I think we've all known, we've known families who have forsaken some of the things in the world They've turned their backs on them. Why? Because they appraised their family according to the word of God. They said, no, I'm not going to send my kids to that, that, that thing they call a school because I love my kids. I would not put my kids in that cesspool, in that piranha pool of a bunch of drag queen hour, homosexual teaching, um, uh, equality, uh, use whatever bathroom you want to mindset people, hang those people. They have reprobate minds, and I'm not putting my kids in there. I don't care if my kids are socially awkward. I'm not putting my kids in public school. Not happening. Not doing it. Now, you go ahead and do what you want to do, but I'm not doing it. Uh, and you say, well, we live in a middle America. It's not there yet. Oh, it's getting there. It's getting there because the government dictates what needs to be taught instead of giving it to states' rights, letting the state decide what needs to be taught. Oh, are you accredited? What that means is, is did the government tell you what to teach? Well, the government can take it and take a long walk off a short pier. When it comes to the education of my children, the education of my children, you'll never find here in the Bible, which is, by the way, my book, my law, which I live by, you'll never find it where it says, give your children to the government and let them teach it. Nope, mom and dad are supposed to do that. Mom and dad are supposed to do that. Now we have a Christian school where it's supported by mom and dad because what we're trying to do is take the values of mom and dad and put it into the school and the kids get that from the school. Now, um, uh, uh, education and family and money, money. Anybody in here like money? Woo, I like money. But I got to tell you what, it's overrated in our society. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil in 1 Timothy 6. If we're not careful in our responsibilities of work, work for the night is coming, we will get to the place where loving money and living for money is what our life is about, and we will let valuable things go. We'll let the valuable things go. You know, sometimes I, I, in my zeal and in my passion of the moment, I talk a big game. I, t I tell the Lord sometimes, Lord, I'll take less money if it means I can be home. Lord, I, I, Lord, if you'll figure out my situation in life of all the different things we got going on, I'll take less. I'll do less. I don't, it's not about money for me, and I like money because when Friday comes rolling around and that paycheck hits the bank account, I'm like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Why? Because, because, it, go, it relieves pressure. It goes, woo, okay, at least, at least I'm making some money. If I'm going through this hardship, at least there's some money to be made. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, was when we lean on that and we start itching for that, we've got to make the money, got to make the money, got to make the money. And money is a great tool, but a horrible, horrible master. If you need to work extra to make ends meet for needs, that's fine. You got to work extra to, to, for your needs. But if you're just working extra and making extra just to make extra and you're not spending time with your family, you're losing your family. You need to ev evaluate your money and your family again differently. If you're just saying, yeah, you know what? I know my wife and kids are at home, but I want extra money. If that extra money isn't to fuel a purpose, then you're, 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 you, that's not wise. You're spending it unwisely. Now, I'm not saying, you know, your budget every month is you know, $3,400 and you need to make exactly $3,400 with no room for a Friday night pizza. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is the money that we earn, at least let it be for a goal, for a reason, for a purpose, if you're working extra, but let it not be at the detriment at the time of your family. Um... When you get to your deathbed one day, um, 
I don't think anybody's going to say, bring me all my trophies, bring me all my awards, bring me my diploma, bring me the money that I have in my safe, bring me my class ring, bring me my Super Bowl ring. When, when Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts are laying on their deathbed 40, 50 years from now, I, I don't believe that they're going to say, bring me my Super Bowl ring. I sure hope they don't. I'm sure ho I sure hope that they hear enough truth between now and then that all these guys, and, and by the way, some of the commentators who are in their, in their 70s, late 70s, and having problems with their health and having problems with their brain, they can lay down on their deathbed and say, bring me my Bible, bring me my family, bring me the, uh, the New Testament where I got saved, bring me that old preacher that used to preach to me every Sunday, bring me, bring me something eternal, bring me something, and then bring me my certificates, bring me my accomplishments, put them around me, around my bed while I die. Nobody in their right mind would do that. You're not taking it with you. If your wife is still living, you'll say, bring me my, my wife. If you have a right relationship with her. If your, your, your uh, husband's still living, bring me my husband. If it's your children, you'll say, bring me my children. Gather my family around me, the things that are important to me. Uh, I, I like carrying guns, but I, I won't say, bring me my gun. I won't say, bring me my, my car. You know, bury me in my, in my Cadillac. You know, I, I, that, that, that won't be it. You know, uh, you see, we get to the place where we let money drive us. We will let stuff drive us. But here's a question for you. And the devil's tried to mess with me over the, over the years telling me along these lines. So here's the question. What, what would you think if I stood up here this morning or this evening or maybe next week and said, um, folks, I'm resigning? And the reason why I'm resigning is because I found a church in Texas that would gladly receive me and pay me four times a week what this church would pay me. Number one, you'd be sad. Number two, you'd be angry or vice versa. You'd be like, that stinking jerk is leaving for money? Well, folks, I, I want to serve the Lord, and, you know, y'all can't pay me what I need to be paid, so I need to go somewhere where I can serve the Lord, and they can pay me what I want to be paid. <laughs> then y'all should have never voted me in in the first place. Then y'all made a miscalculation of me four, three years, two years ago. There was a... Serious miscalculation. We thought Brother Jackson had integrity. We thought Brother Jackson had values. We thought Brother Jackson was driven by the will of God and not money. Sorry. <laughs> I want to drive a Cadillac just like everybody else does. I want to wear a, a, an Armani suit just like everybody else does. I want to have my teeth whitened once a month just like Joe Alstein does. I want to have all the things. That, no. No, the only reason that is, that is um, uh, 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 acceptable for me to take a church somewhere else is because God said so, and he'd have to make it really, really, really clear. Texas is calling again. No, I, uh, I, I, no he's not. No, he's not, because, because the, wouldn't that be something? I go take a church somewhere else, and the money dries up. The pastor takes this place, and a fountain bursts forth. God would go, you dummy. <laughs> You'll do it. <laughs> You'll go to Texas where the money dries up, amen? <laughs> hey, a, a rising tide lifts all boats, Pastor. Uh, stick around. Maybe we can split it. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> surely the Lord can support um, uh, his pastor. He didn't call me here to, to be broke and to be destitute, but he didn't call me here to make me rich. He called me here to do, a, to do a will, whether it's rich or in poor, in sickness and in health. We give vows. What about my vows to God? God, I'll serve you as long as I get what I want. No, no. You see, we got to clear out the devil and the world and the flesh's way of thinking. And we got to say, God, what do you find valuable? That's what I want to strive for. That's what I want to do. Don't let money drive you. Don't let money drive you. I had a family member who lives in another state who called me and said, hey, our pastor's looking, or our church is looking for a pastor. Would you mind putting in, would you mind putting in a, a resume? Would you mind coming down to candidate? <laughs> I told this, I told this family member, I said, I couldn't do that. He said, why? I said, because 
I'd be the only one in the congregation wearing a tie and I'd preach their pants off. <laughs> I'd, I'd burn the house down because I wouldn't bring some Jesus loves you message because of I know the crowd. I'd bring it, baby. I'm bringing some hellfire and damnation preaching and I would do it on purpose because I don't want to come pastor at your church. I want to pastor at Three Rivers Baptist Church. I didn't stick around through the tough times and through the dry times and through the hard times and through the, the dark times just to leave it. No, 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 no. No, and the only, the only thing that's going to pull Jake Jackson away from here is death or, God, or the clear calling of God. The clear calling and, and counsel. I would not leave if I said, hey, you know, I need to talk to brother so-and-so and brother so-and-so, brother so-and-so, can I have a meeting with you guys? And I'd say, look, I'm not, this isn't something I want to broadcast and please keep it in this room, but I think God's calling me to da-da-da. Would you help me with this? Pray with me about this? Da -da -da. And I would only ask men that I was really confident in, so it would be, well, I guess I'll wait till Sunday morning. Uh, but <laughs> I got, all right, ladies, you're next. Um, but um, uh, uh, I'd never do that. And, and no diss on their church. You know, a flavor, for, a flavor for that family is their flavor. I'm not, they're born again Christians. I got nothing against them. But I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not wasting my time doing that because God doesn't want me there. You just want me to fill in for a Sunday. I'll do that. What kind of love offering you got planned for me? <laughs> you know, you got to appraise the things that are valuable. Uh, but um, <laughs> it's not, it can't be money driven. It, it truly, it truly, it can't. Why would you go away and say, um, uh, uh, or you would go away after I said I'm resigning for, for more money. You'd go away and be like, I can't believe that guy. I can't believe that. He was a money grubbing preacher. And all those haters on the outside who say preachers are money grubbing preachers would be right. At least they'd be right about me. If I were to do that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not leaving for another church. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing it. I don't want to leave until God calls me home. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference in that and folks saying, I'm not going to serve God anymore. I've found a job over here. I can't make it to church anymore because I got a job over here. I can't do that. I told, I told the, uh, the group I'm working with now, I said, listen, if I'm, I, I cannot be gone on a weekend. I will not be gone on a weekend. And, and one of the main fellows over there, he told me, he said, then you find an airport and fly home on our dime. Uh, that's the kind of company you want to work for. A company where you go in, when I started uh, working for Penske on that Walmart account, I went in and said, you can have me any day of the week, but you cannot have Sunday. You cannot, absolutely not, no way, no how, have Sunday. It's not yours. And they called me several times, said, can you work Sunday? I said, no, I cannot work Sunday. I'm not doing it. And my truck driver rep, whose name was... Um, uh, John Mertz, he always backed me up. I came in to, uh, came in to um, work one day with bloody knuckles. And he said, what, what happened to your knuckles? I said, I was preaching. He said, I'm going to have to come hear you. I said, you couldn't handle it. And he was, a, he was an Iraq, uh, a um, Desert Storm vet, hit by an IED, 17 surgeries, burly, just a man's man, burly. He's like an Eldon Brumfield and Condon Powers mix. Real teddy bear of a a teddy bear, but a grizzly can do some damage, you know, and, and he's a great guy. I love John Mertz. I, I love him and I still think about him and pray for him. And, um, I, I want more than anything for him to be saved. Um, but, um, man, I want him to be saved. And, um, we got to praise the things that are valuable. And, um, uh, uh, I was preaching, bless God preaching. And I walked in bloody knuckles, you know, and, and why, why? I walked into a group, man, there's 40 truck drivers in there, and he said, and I walked in late on purpose, because they always started those meetings late on purpose, and the one time I was late, they started on time. And I walked in about 10 minutes late, and he said, oh, preacher man, the preacher's here, the preacher's here. And everybody looking around, everybody knew I was a preacher, most, mostly, and, um, and uh, I was kind of standing in the middle of all of them, and I felt like Jesus for a moment, surrounded by all these people, trying to find a chair, and I said, I can preach to y'all right now if you want. And they said, no, no, no. <laughs> but why? My Sundays aren't for sale. It's not for sale. And I got paid guaranteed money. And, and um, uh, if you work on a Sunday, you got paid time and a half. And you got to, no. You can keep your George Washingtons. You can keep your George, your, your, your George Franklins. Uh, your, your Benjamin Franklins. You can keep all that. You can have that because it's not yours anyway, Walmart. It's God's. It's not yours anyway, Polar King. It's God's. 
And if I worked for you and earned extra amount, then that's what I earned, and I'm going to give God his tithe. But God gives promotion from above. God gives the promotion. God rises up and abases. God will take a little old nobody who's faithful and persistent and consistent and has a, a, a faith like a mustard seed and say, man, I, 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 my eyes have been running about the whole earth finding people, and that's one of them that right there. That Jake Jackson, I know he doesn't have a college degree. I know he's not some great intellect. He, he's not a great reader. He's got some, he's got some blemishes. He's got a strong holder here there but man that guy gets knocked down and he gets right back up that and there's not saying pat myself on the back but I'm talking about you too when I say Jake Jackson I'm incorporating you and when I say you I'm incorporating me but we together as a people as humans God says appraise the things that I find worthy and I can I can work out your life and give you things that you wouldn't even dream of you wouldn't even dream of now very quickly very quick three minutes uh God values God values some areas of our life very highly. You know, where we place our faith, our family, our finances, uh, what we do with our, our time, our talent, our treasure. Uh, uh, and we ought to spend time in the things that God finds valuable. We ought to spend time in eternal work. In eternal work. I asked you several weeks ago, I said, what I want you to do this week is I want you to evaluate where you spend your time. Where everybody's given courtesy. Or, or, or currency. Lucas, you have as much currency every single day as I have. Every single day. You have 24 hours. Now, I know you sleep and you got school and you got things like that, but you are allotted 24 hours a day. I am allotted 24 hours. Strikes midnight tonight, you have 24 hours. If God wills it, God allows it, God tarries, you've got 24 hours just as I have 24 hours. Where do you spend your time? Oh, I spend it sleeping in this and, and eating over here and chores here and school here. Okay, that's fine, but where do you spend it here? Where do you spend it here? How do we spend it here? I'm going to spend 11 hours, oh, 10 and a half hours, because I try to find the, um, uh, between 10 and 10 and a half hours uh, of driving, I try to spend the last hour or half an hour trying to find somewhere to park for the night, which is a trip. Uh, but um, uh, I'll spend a lot of time behind the wheel tomorrow. I already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen to some uh, uh, to some preaching. I'm going to listen to some Bible. I'm going to listen to some sports. I'm going to listen to some comedy. I'm going to listen to things that, that take my mind off of the monotonous. <laughs> it can get quiet out there. But we take time, figure out where you spend your time. So uh, I'm going to give you something to do. And you're not going to do it, but I'm going to give you something to do, at least think about. Make a list of things that are valuable to you. And I don't mean your watch. But I mean eternal, th well, you know what, no. I want you to make a list of things that are valuable to you. Then make a list of the time you spend with the things that you listed that are valuable. So make a list of things that are valuable and then make a list of time that you spend on those things that you think are valuable. If I uh, asked you to list the things that you considered to be uh, of the most valuable in life, uh, I think some folks would write down family. I think you would. I know I would. I know some people in here would. You'd write down family. But if I asked you, when's the last time you took your wife out on a date? When's the last time you bought her a present? Ladies, when's the last time you rubbed his feet? No. When's the <laughs> She said, never, amen. Never, ever, oh, no, never will I rub your feet. Uh, when's the last time we did things for our spouse? When's the last time we did that? You say, well, I haven't had the time. But you said it was on your list, didn't you? My children are the most important. When's the last time you spent real valuable time with them? And I don't mean movie time or television time or tablet time or game time. Uh, uh, I mean a real, real time together where you knew, you knew each other. Um, Hudson, um, Friday morning, I think it was, or Friday, uh, or, or yeah, Friday morning, um, came and jumped on our bed, you know, and he wanted to grab the tablet and find some cartoon to watch. I said, no, put it away. We just kind of hung out together. And I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he said, mm, well, I was thinking about being a paratrooper. I said, oh, you were? He said, yeah, but I think I'm just going to do what you do. I said, what do I do? I said, drive a truck. And he went, he said, and preach. I said, all right. Yeah, and what am I doing? I'm just spending a little bit of valuable time with my kid. You say, well, who cares what a five-year-old kid has to say? A parent who values, who values his children. They're on our list. Do we spend time with them? I don't have the time, but you said they're the most valuable. 
They're, they are the most valuable. There was a, a, a woman. I went five minutes. I was supposed to go three. Last story. There was a wife who said to her husband, husband, if the house was, was, was burning down and you had one minute to get out, and, and, you, you, and, 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 and what would you take on your way out? What, what would you do take to, to, to hurry up and grab that thing to get out? And I said, well, you know, the kids. She said, no, 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 don't worry about me. Don't worry about the kids. Don't, we're all getting out together. What's one thing that you would grab? You know, you're, or you're by yourself. You know, we're not in the house and you're by yourself. Um, I, I would like to think I'd grab my Bible you know, but the thing is, is I've got lots of Bibles, but I have one Bible that's like the one I use the most. I think I'd grab that. Um, there's not a lot, and I'm glad. I don't have a lot of stuff to keep my attention away from seeking God. I'm glad I don't have a theater room. I'm glad I don't have a game room. I'm glad I don't have four-wheelers and dirt bikes and horses and stables. Now, those things are all cool, and wouldn't it be nice to find the balance in having those things and serving the Lord with all your might? See, it can be done. It can be done. But let God give you those things. Or let him never give you those things and find the contentment with the life it is that you're living. You see, a life that is scarce of material but full of God is a life well lived. A life that is full of material and scarce of God is a life poorly lived. I want the, I want the first. And that it's kind of hard to say that because I like stuff. <laughs> I like baseball games and football games and hot rods, and I, uh, trucks. You know, I, li I like stuff, but I can't take any of it with me. And I want to find out what God's God, what's valuable? And then I want to spend my life investing in what's eternally valuable. Souls are eternally valuable. Your relationships are eternally valuable. And what you do for eternity, your work for eternity, is what's valuable. So why don't you take some time in your life and start prioritizing. Make a list. Write it down. Put it down on papers and say, what's valuable to me? And then find out if it lines up with God's word or not. Say, man, that's valuable to me, and that's not even biblical. And I spend a lot of time doing that. God, I want to stop. God, would you give me victory? God, would you help me? Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Why don't you ask God to help you determine what's valuable in your life? See, we're not, Christianity is not cookie cutter. The, the Christian life is not some square that we all have to fit into because the neat thing is, is we're all unique individuals with likes and dislikes, and God knows that. So you may find relaxing with your wife one way that's valuable to you that maybe might, might, might not be my cup of tea, but I do it another way. We're all unique individuals. How we spend our time where we spend our time, putting our money where our mouth is. That's all valuable. You know, I, sometimes I, I seek for words to express it just perfectly. Uh, but I know that the Holy Spirit of God can make up for what I can't do. And I pray that the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, will speak to you about where you spend your time. You know, you, this, you Sunday morning people who come back on Sunday night, uh, you're spending it wisely. I know it seems sometimes like, ah, somebody told me this morning, I don't, we almost didn't come today. They made the right decision in coming today. You can never go wrong by doing right. What's valuable, Brother Jake? Well, let's take some time over the next few weeks and find out what the Bible says is valuable. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for all that you've done and that you're doing. 
Uh, Lord, it's a big night in America tonight. Uh, many Christians have, and, and I'm not here to fillet them or ridicule or uh, even rebuke them. I'll let you do that. Uh, but Lord, a lot of Christians stayed home from church across our country tonight to get ready for the Super Bowl. A lot of churches canceled their service and pulled out the big screen for evening service and made their Sunday night service turn into a Super Bowl media room. Their auditorium, they've decorated it in Super Bowl. And Lord, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm not trying to compromise or avoid confrontation, but whatever. I don't think you'd have us do that. I don't think that's what church is all about. But Lord, I want to honor you in everything that we do. Uh, and I don't ever want to bring the world into this time of preaching and not its influence. And Lord, a lot of those Super Bowl guys, they, they're not even saved. But Lord, I'd ask somehow, some way, that lost people would hear the gospel and born-again backsliders would get right with you. Let's have one, Lord, let's have a revival before you come back. <laughs> let's see the church come back to Christ before you come back. Oh, Heavenly Father, that you'd help us be what we're supposed to be and do what we're supposed to do according to your word and be blessed by it. I'd ask that you'd bless our week, keep us safe. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you were dismissed. <laughs>